Are you thinking about retiring to Florida or Puerto Rico, but aren't sure which is right for you? Today we're going to compare Florida versus Puerto Rico as retirement destinations. We'll look at the cost of living, climate, amenities, culture, healthcare, and home prices in six different areas so that you can better understand the options and choose what's right for you. Florida and Puerto Rico both have a lot to offer potential retirees. Some things are similar while others are totally different, so let's start with the climate. Florida features a subtropical climate with hot, humid summers that typically get up to 92 degrees Fahrenheit in both the north and the south, with winter lows close to 60 degrees in the north and 70 degrees in the south. Puerto Rico offers a tropical climate, also with hot, humid summers, though with trade winds that can make it a lot more comfortable depending on where you're at on the island. The average highs are around 88 degrees in the summers with average lows around 78 degrees in the winters at sea level, but up in the mountains it can be 15 degrees cooler depending on how high you go. Florida doesn't really have this option for escaping the heat. Both places are subject to hurricanes, though most of the time they blow right by Puerto Rico to the north and head up to Florida where they seem to hit a lot more often. If a severe hurricane does hit Puerto Rico, however, it's harder to get outside help if needed due to its thousand plus mile distance from the U.S. mainland. And be sure to buy your booze by 5 p.m. the day before the hurricane hits because after that, by law, no store will sell it to you in Puerto Rico. Don't know why. If you know why, put it down in the comments below. Both Florida and Puerto Rico have only two real seasons, the rainy season and dry season or as I like to say, the hot season and the less hot season. But if you like this kind of weather, then let's talk about what's really important, beaches. People love the idea of retiring to the beach. As it happens, Florida and Puerto Rico both offer hundreds of miles of stunning beaches, but the similarities in there. Florida's 825 miles of beaches are typically expansive and flat, sometimes bordered by swampy wetlands. So not a lot of variety despite its 1,350 miles of coastline. Puerto Rico's 275 miles of coastline offers over 300 beaches, many of them surrounded by really interesting rock formations with varying wave conditions. So there's just a lot more to discover there. You'll find blowholes, caves, coves, tide pools, and more all over the island. Now let's talk about attractions. Florida and Puerto Rico are both tourist destinations, which means there are lots of fun things to do. You'll find historic sites to explore, museums, galleries, shopping, restaurants, nightlife, and outdoor activities like hiking, biking, kayaking, snorkeling, sailing, surfing, and of course, golf. Your experiences exploring both places, however, will be different given their infrastructure and cultural differences. Although you will find some of the same chain stores and restaurants in Puerto Rico as in the mainland US, the island itself has a completely different flavor than Florida. Puerto Rico has more of an older Caribbean feel with a strong Spanish heritage, a controversial colonial history, and to be honest, crumbling infrastructure. It's like the US and South America had a baby in the Caribbean, resulting in this really unique blend of cultures. Florida seems more polished and new with shiny, sometimes funky downtowns, miles of suburbs, and strip shopping everywhere. It's just typical America from what I've seen. But in Florida, you can count on good roads, high-speed internet, and an electrical grid that works mostly, which isn't always the case in Puerto Rico. One thing Puerto Rico has that Florida doesn't is mountains, which gives you more options outside like Jeep, ATV, cave, and coffee plantation tours, zip line adventures, and hiking to many beautiful waterfalls and swimming holes all over the island. Both Florida and Puerto Rico have good travel access. From Florida, you can easily fly anywhere in the world. And from San Juan, you can get numerous flights to Florida, New York, and points beyond. Florida has bigger cruise ports, but San Juan is a popular stop, also offering some really cool cruises that loop the entire Caribbean. Okay, healthcare is typically a big deal to retirees. Florida offers state-of-the-art healthcare, and my understanding is that it's not too hard to find a new doctor or specialist when you move there, and they generally respect appointment times. Puerto Rico offers good health care if you can actually get in to see a doctor. There is currently a shortage of doctors and specialists, so it may take weeks or months to get an appointment. 
Appointment times are also kind of a loose concept, which means you'll often end up waiting hours past your allotted time. So plan on spending a whole day out if you need to see a doctor in Puerto Rico. Now I have heard that this situation has gotten a little better since COVID. So if you know anything about that, please share it in the comments below. That said, in my experience, health insurance in Puerto Rico was half half the cost of what it was in the US, so that's the trade-off. If you're healthy and don't need much medical intervention, then Puerto Rico may be a great choice. But if you have special needs, then Florida may be better. Crime is another big concern for a lot of people. Crimegrade.org gives Puerto Rico a D for crime as its crime rate is higher than the average US state. Puerto Rico ranks in the 17th percentile for safety, meaning 83% of states are safer and 17% of states are more dangerous. The overall crime rate in Puerto Rico is 48.5 per thousand residents during a standard year, and people who live there generally consider the central part of the island to be the safest. Notably, violent crime and property crime rates aren't that high per thousand residents, but drug and vandalism crimes are, and those are what's dragging down the overall score for the island. I personally felt safe in Puerto Rico while living there, but I was careful to stay out of the sketchy areas. Florida gets a grade C, which means its crime rate is about the same as the average U.S. state. Florida is in the 46th percentile for safety, meaning that 54% of states are safer and 46% of states are more dangerous. The crime rate in Florida is 39.08 per thousand residents during a standard year. People who live in Florida generally consider the northeast part of the state to be the safest. Interestingly, Florida's violent crimes and property crimes are higher than Puerto Rico's. Crime is tough to generalize because it's always relative to the community you live in, but I'll put a link to Crime Grade in the description below so that you can explore these areas further. And while we're on the topic of threats, let's talk about critters. Florida and Puerto Rico both have mosquitoes, roaches, brown recluse spiders, and biting ants all year round. But Florida has alligators, water moccasins, bears, and panthers, which Puerto Rico does not. However, Puerto Rico does have stray dogs and iguanas all over the island. The iguanas will pretty much eat anything in your garden that you like to eat, and the dogs will sometimes eat the iguanas, so that's helpful, I guess. These dogs sometimes run in packs, which can become aggressive, so beware of that. And sadly, both the dogs and iguanas are frequently hit by cars on the highway and left there to rot, which is not pleasant to drive by. Okay, let's talk cost of living. By now, you may be leaning towards one location or the other, but when it comes to retirement, the biggest question of all is, can I afford to go where I want? Numbio is a great tool for estimating what a place will cost to live compared to where you live now. It's not 100% accurate, however, because it depends on crowdsourcing for its data and prices are always changing. But it's a good starting point to explore, so I'll put a link below. We're gonna use Numbio to compare three sets of cities to get a sense of the cost of living in Florida versus Puerto Rico. And the cities are San Juan versus Miami, Rincon versus St. Augustine, and Gaguas versus Ocala. Okay, so here we are on Numbio, and first we're gonna look at the cost differences between Miami, Florida, and San Juan. So right up here at the top, they give you a nice summary. Generally, things in San Juan are cheaper. Restaurants, for example, pretty much across the board. Groceries, milk is definitely more expensive. Bananas are more expensive, and I think that's because they all come from Costa Rica, and they have to go through through Florida before they go to the islands, so that adds cost. Potatoes, um, lettuce, and some other produce, that's typically more on the island. Wine is definitely more, because it all has to be shipped in, and cigarettes are quite a bit more. Transportation in San Juan is, looks like more in a lot of cases. So probably a factor of gas being more expensive. I don't trust what they say about the automobiles here. Generally, automobiles are more expensive. Electricity, definitely more expensive on the island. It's just, they have to ship in the oil to run the electric plants and it's just across the board gonna be more expensive. A lot of things, sports and leisure, childcare, less expensive. Clothing and shoes, a bit more expensive. 
And that's generally true because you have to ship it to the island. Rent is definitely lower in San Juan, and that's a huge light item for people, so you can save a lot there. Salaries are lower, so if you need to work or supplement with a side job, you're gonna get paid less. And if you need to finance a home, it's going to cost you more on the island. The median list price for a home in San Juan, according to Realtor.com, is $229,000. But take all of these housing figures I'm about to give you with a grain of salt because many homes on the island are never listed on the MLS and so they aren't counted in these stats. Classificados Online is another good local source to find more listings. But in Miami, I can reliably say that the median list price for a home is currently $515,000. St. Augustine compared to Rincon. So these two cities are smaller, so there's not as much data on them. But generally, restaurants in Rincon are less expensive. Milk is more expensive, eggs, bananas. And I would say produce is generally more expensive. I'm not sure that these Rincon figures have been updated since inflation has taken hold. Transportation is cheaper in Rincon and utilities. Electricity is going to be a lot more. Clothing and shoes, definitely more expensive because you got to ship it to the island and rents are definitely going to be cheaper. Um, I think some of these prices are abnormally low. It could be just because I don't think these have been updated too, too recently and prices have been rising. The median list price for a home in Rincon, Puerto Rico is currently $425,000, but again, take this with a grain of salt, check classificados for more homes. Meanwhile, the median list price for a home in St. Augustine, Florida is $525,000. All right, so Ocala, Florida versus Caguas. Again, these are smaller cities with not a ton of data, but looks like mid-range restaurants in Caguas are more expensive. Cappuccinos are more expensive, but everything else is cheaper. Groceries, again, milk is higher. Bananas are higher. Lettuce and other things like tomatoes are are typically higher, although it looks like in this instance they're not. Wine is higher, cigarettes are higher. Utilities definitely are gonna be higher on the island. This is interesting, I guess gym memberships cost more in Caguas. Clothing is gonna be a bit more expensive because you have to ship it, but rent per month is going to be cheaper. Salaries are gonna be less and the cost of financing is gonna be more. The median list price for a home in Caguas is $126,000, but again, Check classificados for more. Meanwhile, the median list price of a home in Ocala, Florida is $283,000. Some other costs to consider include gas, which in Florida is currently at $4.11 per gallon, while in Puerto Rico it's running at $4.49 per gallon. Although the island does run in liters, I did the conversion for you. Auto insurance in Florida runs an average $2,364 per year, while in Puerto Rico it's typically in the $800 to $1,300 range. Cars themselves in Puerto Rico typically cost 15% more than on the mainland due to import taxes and shipping fees. Labor costs on repairs are typically less due to generally lower wages on the island, though parts can cost more due to shipping costs. We serviced our car at the dealership, which seemed slightly less expensive than what we've been paying for dealer service in Reno, Nevada. Taxes. Florida is a no income tax state, which is great for retirees with sales tax averaging 7% and property taxes a reasonable 0.94% of value or 1331 on average. Puerto Rico residents are subject to income taxes ranging from zero to 33% depending on income. You may qualify for Act 60 tax exemptions if you were not a resident of the island from January 17th, 2006 to January 17th, 2012. However, if you go this route, you will need to make an annual $10,000 donation to an approved local nonprofit, file an annual report with a $5,000 filing fee, purchase a primary residence within two years of moving there, and incur the costs of a local attorney to set all this up and keep track of all the changes and in fee increases as the goalpost on this program always seems to be moving. Property taxes in Puerto Rico are roughly around 1% of the price paid and sales tax is generally 11.5%, so kind of high. Okay, homeowner insurance. In Florida, it is the third highest
highest in the nation according to insurance.com at an average $3,643 per year. Now, I don't have any average data for Puerto Rico, but our policy was about half that much. But four and a half years after Hurricane Maria, our insurance company still hasn't settled our claim, so I'm not sure if any policy is worth anything at all on the island. This brings up one more thing to consider when deciding between Florida and Puerto Rico, and that's bureaucracy. The DMV, government offices, legal system, insurance companies, banks, utilities, cable companies, and other big institutions will be far easier to deal with in Florida than they will be in Puerto Rico, guaranteed. Now, if you don't mind wasting days dealing with customer service reps who truly don't care about your issue, no matter how nice you are, or how valid the issue may be, eh, you'll be fine in Puerto Rico. But if that kind of thing grates on your nerves, then Florida may be a better choice. In the end, only you can make these decisions given your personal situation. And also, you should know that I've lived in Puerto Rico, but only visited Florida. So any opinions I've expressed here are based on my own limited experiences in these two places. Either way, before making a decision to actually move, you really need to visit both places and stay a while to see how you feel about each of them. And if Puerto Rico is still a contender, I did do a whole video explaining how to scout the island, which I'll link to here. See you next time.